So today, folks at home, I'm going to be giving a tutorial on how to cook pasta in an Instant Pot. Uh, I have only used the Instant Pot with pasta a couple times in this bar, but for those at home, uh, it's incredibly easy and I'm gonna show you how to do it. You can do it in a um, saucepan or in a, in a, a stock pot. Uh, so I'm gonna make the pasta uh, in the Instant Pot, and then I'm going to uh, finish it in a pan. So I've got some garlic that's already um, uh, relatively chopped, but I'm going to give it a bit more of a chop. Before I do that, actually, I'm going to show you how to smash a piece of garlic. Be the time to get in there with that. Get it nice and tight. Get a nice little whack. Skin comes off, and garlic flies everywhere. And then it's an easy process simply to take the skin off, like so. A lot easier than using those little finger rollers. So this is a lot of pasta. Now this is, excuse me, this is a lot of garlic. We're gonna give this a rough chop. It doesn't need to be incredibly finely diced. Always get your claw in there. Make sure you don't slice off any of your fingies. But I like my garlic to be on a rough chop. Doesn't need to be anything too crazy. Something. You don't want to keep the big pieces in there because those will not totally break down. But yeah, you know, nice little rough chop there. Pick out any skits you got. Now we've got the water boiling. <clears throat> what do they say about a pot that never boils, Joshua? Never boils when it's washed. Oh, I've washed a pot plenty of times. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did it boil? I thought this was going to be a joke. No. Alright, so while we're waiting for our water to boil, Josh, why don't you get over here for a second? I'm getting over there. Let's take some flat leaf parsley. And one of the best ways to chop any kind of herb is to roll it up and then give it a nice. All right, you got your shot? Mm -hmm. All right, come on back and then like give your parsley a chop there. Another rough chop. All right, Let's save that for a bit. I usually discard the stems. I use that to final garnish. And we're gonna take our tarragon and do the same thing. Kind of take off the, the very ends of the tarragon. But again, we're going to ball it up into sort of like a little cigar. Give that another rough chop. your tarragon a rough chop. Save that for a bit. Josh, have you ever smelled tarragon before? Mm hmm You like it? Oh, yeah. I can smell it right now. What does it smell like to you? Tarragon. Well, I mean, <laughs> coffee, coffee tastes like coffee, but what else is, what is, does tarragon smell like? Yeah, come on in. I've always thought that tarragon Smells a lot like, like honest or licorice or absinthe. Yeah, it does a lot, right? A lot like a mess. Right. This dish would be perfect to pair with uh, an absinthe, uh, overall absinthe. God, I love terrible. Okay, so we've got our water boiling, and before I turn on the burner, I'm actually just going to bloom some pepper in the oil. I'm gonna bloom I just let that hang out for a second and I'll turn on the burner and I'll heat the oil here in a second and it'll bloom even better but pepper and oil will just kind of bloom naturally. All right. Uh, so today I'll be using tritole and I'm not entirely sure what it 
translates to in Italian, but it's basically these little, like, Fantasia-looking dudes. Fantasia little mushrooms, little dancing mushrooms. Little spiral dudes that kind of curve on in, in on themselves, almost like a little, what do you call that, Josh, a little, like, clef note? Yeah, a little bit. A little yeah. clef note, right? Yeah. So there was a bar I worked at once. Uh, real strange place. Uh, whole cast of characters, you know, whatnot, would file in, file out. I was there for quite a while. I became really desensitized to a lot of the strange customers. But you know what, Josh? This one day really took the cake. These two whales walked in the bar. Oh my. You know? And they were, man, they were there for like hours and hours and hours and hours. They were drinking, you know. I, they were drinking booze like it was water, you know? So anyway... There I am bartending at this bar, and I see these two whales, you know, they're still fucking drinking in there all night long. Anyway, I eavesdrop on their conversation, and uh, deep in their cups, uh, this one whale, he goes, uh, mm -hmm. And you know, the other whale then turned to that first whale and he said, Shut up, Greg, you're drunk. <laughs> I was going to say, it's not, it's not bad boat speaking today, bro. Now that the water's boiling, uh, I'm going to take my dried pasta. And I'm going to go right on in with it. In with the pasta. Uh, and in an instant pot, when you put pasta in the pasta water, it will bring down the temperature. But it doesn't need to be, you know, a full rolling boil. You're basically just waiting for it to rehydrate. Just rehydrating the pasta. We have a block of Parmigiano Reggiano. Uh, always buy the block of cheese. Do not buy pre-shredded because that shit is gross. And we're going to hold it by the rind back here. Make sure not to shred the rinds. We're going to go ahead and grate that cheese. Do the rest in here. You know, I always find it so funny that when people make fettuccine alfredo, they're using cream, and I don't, I'm not gonna say that putting cream in pasta isn't delicious, but there's a better way, I think, and a more traditional way, which I prefer to make, uh, we're not using fettuccine today, but to make an alfredo sauce with just simply just cheese, butter, and pasta water, and I'm gonna be adding a little bit of rosé today, because I do like the taste of white wine in my pasta. But yeah, you can create an emulsion basically from cheese, pasta water, and butter, or oil. And it's just as delicious, if not more delicious, than using actual straight cream. And a fun fact about if you buy Parmesan on, uh, on the rind and in a block is that you can save your Parmesan rind and you can put it in your soups. And it will thicken that damn thing up real nice. Real nice. Mm. Yep, good fact. I love to put Parmesan rinds in uh, Italian wedding soup. Okay, so the pasta's been boiling for a little bit. Dried pasta usually takes about six to eight minutes. You still working on that Parmesan? I'll start that over. <laughs> Bring in a nice tall glass of Campari and soda. Yeah, wash it down. And since there's a 30 minute timer on the, um, on the saute function in the Instant Pot, which is how you'll be boiling water, use the, the saute function. Um, to get it up to boil, it will take uh, about 20 minutes, and then um, it could take as many as 10 to actually boil the pasta. Since you, after you've introduced the pasta, bring in, brought down the temperature, so you may need to start the saute function again. 
Uh, we are not going to flam- flambe this one, but cheers to flambe. all. Cheers to all the. Come in the shot. Come in. Turn on the shot. Come here. Come on, guys. I'm in right. it right now. Really I mean, you don't, you don't need to get your face in, but just give right. I'm in the shot. All right, right whatever. Now. Cheers. I know where the shot is. Cheers. 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 All right. That's good. The best way to check for your pasta's doneness is not to throw it against a wall. Is basically just to eat it. Since we're going to finish the pasta in the pan, you want to cook it actually um, uh, under al dente. You want to cook it under al dente. Al dente is toothsome, so basically if you're cooking it under al dente, then you basically want still uh, more than a little bit of uh, a bite, um, a little bit more of pressure on your teeth when you are biting into the pasta. Since we're going to finish it in the pan. But I think I should get going here. Josh. It's a little hot. So I'm gonna let that go for 30 more seconds. Yeah. You always want to salt your pasta water very heavily. Sort of like, sort of like, just like the Mediterranean Ocean. As this. So now we're going to drain your pasta water, and you want, you want to reserve a little bit of the pasta water. Yeah, get on here. You want to reserve a little bit of the pasta water because we will be cooking with that in a second. One trick that I like to do is I actually like to take my butter. So fucking quick. I like to take my butter. Don't get a shot. I like to take my butter and actually add it into. God, we're gonna have to edit this out. We'll just use it for the audio. I like to uh, put my butter in into my pasta water so it's already incorporated. So now. So now we've drained our pasta. And we've reserved our pasta water with your butter included. And again, we've cooked the pasta under al dente. So we'll let that melt in the pasta water right there. And we're just going to start blooming the pepper. And this does look like an obscene amount of garlic. And I am definitely going to use all of that. But yeah, shortly what we're basically going to be doing is creating an emulsion between the pasta water, uh, the butter, and the cheese. So, on we go. You can kind of see the olive oil starting to shimmer. That's when you kind of know it's hot. You can do, and we don't. I keep getting ten shots of this. Time. So we don't want to uh, brown the garlic, but we do just kind of want to take off the raw edge. Since my pasta water is already salted, I'm not going to add salt at this point. The butter was unsalted. I just don't want it to be too salty. I might add just a little bit of salt. Just like, something like that would be fine. All right, so you want to let your garlic go for about a minute. If that, that's looking good because it will continue to cook. Basically just lightly fry it. All right. All right, since we're cooking in a bar right now, we're using a chinois. It's all clean. Here we go. All right, and now at this point, we do want to add our butter and pasta water. 
see I'm constantly agitating in order to keep it. All right, now at this point, I'll add some cheese. And again, you don't want to add too much pasta water right at first, but don't skip on the cheese. Because it will cook down and it will create an emotion. Excuse me, a little bit of rosé. So again, we've added the pasta water with the butter. We've added our cheese and we've added just a little bit of white wine. And we're gonna just cook this until it reduces down a bit and burned off a little bit of the alcohol taste. Always taste as you go. Yeah, it's gonna be so delicious. <laughs> All right, at this point, like I said, we can add a little bit more salt if we need to. Just a bit more. And I think just a bit more cheese. And we'll save the rest for finishing. All right, now we're done. So we've taken our pasta off of the heat. And now we're going to add our fresh tarragon. And our fresh parsley. A little bit of lime. finish off with lime zest and lime juice. And since we're making this in a bar, nothing like a little coffee cup. It's a plate. And then at the very end, a little bit of cracked pepper. And just a bit more cheese. And maybe we'll garnish with a bit more parsley on top. Uh, Tritole with a uh, rosé butter cream sauce. Thank you. Bon appetit. Eat up. Fucking have fun. Have fun with your fucking cooking. The end.